welcome all this is the second uh, part of the uh, engineer mechanics lesson and we are discussing the module one so we have already studied the introduction to um, uh, engineer mechanics and we have discussed uh, different types of uh, or uh, different branches of mechanics etc and in this lesson we are going to discuss about the laws of mechanics these laws you have already studied uh, in your school classes and the first one is newton's three laws of motion you already know that uh, what are the three laws of motion you have to discuss that so the first uh, there are uh, three laws of motion newton's laws of motion and uh, that is newton, newton's first law of motion and it is also known as principle of the equilibrium of forces and the second law of motion and the second law is the basic for uh, most of the analysis of dynamics or uh, it is the basics idea of dynamics and uh, Newton's third law of motion and and it is the basics of our understanding of force so that is a uh, relation uh, the in Newton's third law of motion is mainly uh, and uh, understanding the force of a uh, body force acting on a body and there is another law that is known as Newton's law of gravitation so it is the gravitational attraction between any two particles or bodies so this is the general law that is known as Newton's law of gravitation okay so these are the main uh, three main laws and uh, Newton's law of gravitation so what is Newton's first law of motion Newton's first law of motion is also known as principle of the equilibrium of forces so you have already know that Newton's first law of motion when a particle originally at rest or moving in a straight line with a constant velocity tends to remain in the state provided the particle is not subject to an unbalanced force if a particle is moving or uh, at a rest then um, it has a tendency to be in that state that is known as uh, Newton's first law of motion a particle originally at rest or moving in a straight line with a constant velocity tends to remain in this state that means tends to remain in the rest or of motion unless it is subject to an unbalanced or external force so the first law contains the principle of equilibrium of forces okay the first law constitutes the principle of equilibrium of forces so consider here that uh, uh, is f1 f2 and f3 are the three forces and if three forces are in equilibrium then uh, the resultant that equilibrium means uh, uh, static equilibrium and dynamic equilibrium if the body is in static equilibrium that does not move the body does not move if it is in dynamic equilibrium it has a constant velocity that means the acceleration must be zero okay and according to Newton's second law A particle of mass m acting upon by a unbalanced force f experiences an acceleration a that has the same direction as the force and the magnitude that is directly proportional to the force or simply force acting on a body tends to move the body and it creates an acceleration a and also and that is known as Newton's second law of motion okay consider body 
and a force F is acting on the body and because of this force the body moves with an acceleration A. That accelerated motion is due to Newton's second law of motion. Okay, And most of our analysis in dynamics are uh, studied by using Newton's second law of motion or second law uh, applies to dynamics analysis of a body. Okay. And Newton's third law of motion, the mutual force of attraction and reaction between the two particles are equal, opposite and collinear. Or every action in nature has an equal and opposite reaction. If we so this third law of motion is the basic understanding of force and the reaction of a body. If we apply a force on a body, the body applies back a reaction force. That is the basic idea of Newton's third law of motion. Every for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So the third law is basic to our understanding of force. Force always occurs in pairs of equal and opposite forces. That means when a force is acting on a body, there is an equal and opposite reaction force acting from the body. Okay, so that is the uh, third law of motion. That is law of action and reaction. It is also known as law of action and reaction. If two bodies a and B. When a force F is acting by A to body B and a force F is because of this force F, there is a reaction force acting from the body B to A. Okay, so when we uh, act a force on a body, the body will act a reaction force to that body. Okay, so that is the third law of motion, Newton's third law of motion. And next one is Newton's law of gravitational attraction or gravitational attraction between any two particles. We know that any particle on the universe will attract each other. Okay. And the force of attraction is very low and also the force of attraction depends upon the mass of the body. If the mass is very low, then the force of attraction between two bodies will become very low. Okay. So all the bodies in the universe will act or will attract each other. So that is the main, uh, that is an important criteria. Okay. So according to this law, weight of a body is required to be computed in static as well as dynamics. This law governs to the gravitational attraction between any two particles. Okay. So when we consider two bodies with mass m1 and m2 and these bodies are at a distance r. Then according to uh, law of Newton's law of gravitational attraction, force, force of attraction between the two bodies is equal to g into m1 m2 divided by r square, where m1 and m2 are the masses of the two bodies. Okay. So here the rotation of the earth is not taken into account and m1 and m2 are two part uh, mass of two particles. And R is the distance between the two particles. And also F is the mutual force of attraction between the two particles. And G is the universal uh, constant of gravitation. So G is equal to 6.673 into 10 raised to minus 11 meter cube per kilogram second square. Okay. So these values found out by experiments. Okay. So from this equation or from this law, we can find the find out the force of attraction between 
to bodies so every body in the universe will attract each other and this attraction is very negligible when the masses of the two bodies are small okay because it is 6.673 into 10 to minus 11 and when this mass become very small and the, this force become very small quantity okay when the bus become very large as uh, mass of earth mass of uh, moon etc then there is a force of attraction between these two uh, heavy bodies okay so when mass become very uh, very low the force of attraction between two particles become very low that is why we don't consider this attraction between two bodies normally so gravitational attraction of the earth okay consider this is earth and earth has a uh, mass m e and consider another and a body m resting on the surface of the earth which is at a distance r from the center of the earth okay so if particles are located at or near the surface of the earth the only significant gravitational force is that between the earth and the particle okay when the body, when the body is at the near the surface of the earth the gravitational force is bet force between the earth and the particle the only significant gravitational force is the between the earth and the particle okay let consider mass of the particle m and mass of earth is me and let r be the distance between earth center and the particle weight of the particle w is equal to we already uh, know this equation w is equal to g into m1 m2 divided by r square here m1 is small letter m and m2 is cap uh, me and divided by r square where w becomes g okay so we know that w is equal to mass into g or mass into gravitational attraction so where g is equal to g into me by r square and this is known as acceleration due to gravity and this will by calculating this we can we get 9.81 meter per second square so this is the gravitational constant or gravitational was acceleration due to gravity of earth okay this value will be different when we consider uh, other planets like uh, jupiter mars etc okay and if we consider the gravitational attraction of uh, moon also it, the uh, that quantity will be different because of the mass of the particle will be mass of the moon will be different okay so that is how we have to we can find out the acceleration due to gravity so we have already studied uh, three laws of uh, two three uh, newton's law of motion and gravitational law of attraction between two forces and another one is the another law of, law of uh, forces is the parallelogram law of forces so according to this law if two forces p and q acting at a point a are represented by the adjacent sides of a parallelogram then the diagonal of the parallelogram passing through that point of intersection represents the resultant if p and q are represented by the adjacent sides of a parallelogram then the diagonal according to in this uh, parallelogram law of forces the diagonal will become equal to the resultant of the two forces okay and that resultant can be calculated by using this equation r is equal to root of p square plus q square plus 2 pq cos alpha okay 
so this is known as low parallelogram or parallelogram low forces so this uh, low is used to find out the resultant of two forces if two forces are acting on a body we have to find out the resultant force and the resultant force can be calculated or uh, calculated by using this parallelogram low forces consider a parallelogram using a force p and a force q as two sides of the parallelogram now the diagonal passing through a represents the resultant force this is called parallelogram law of additional forces so this is and this theory is known as parallelogram law of additional forces additional two forces so another uh, law is the triangular law of forces if two forces acting simultaneously on a body are represented by the sides of a triangle taken in order then the resultant is represented by closing side of the triangle taken in the opposite order here we can say that we can see p and q are two forces and we place the force q on the tip of p okay then we get p and q here so in order to close the triangle we have to draw a force from the tail of p to the tip of q then this line represents the resultant pq okay if we change the order what happened the resultant will get the same will be the same okay the sum of two forces p and q may be obtained by arranging p and q in tip to tail fashion and then connecting the tail of p to tip of q okay so r is equal to p plus q which is similar to q plus p subtracting when we have to subtract one force from another force subtraction of forces obtained by addition of corresponding negative forces the force p minus q is obtained by adding to p with the negative force of uh, negative of q or what is mean by negative of q if p and q these are these are the two forces p and q then negative of q means the direction will be changed direction will be reversed q is acting in this direction in upwards and negative q will be acting downwards okay in this fashion if we uh, add the two uh, forces we will get p minus q okay so subtracting a force from a uh, from an another force that we adding the force with the negative of the and other force then we get the uh, subtracting subtracted uh, force so p minus q is equal to p plus minus q so that's all for today and these are the main laws of mechanics okay so we can we will uh, discuss the other chapters in the next class thank you